Today's episode is called, Visit from a Big Star. A movie idol wants to hide away from it all at the Shady Rest. Original air date, January 28, 1964. Come ride the little train that is rolling down the tracks to the junction. Forget about your cares, it is time to relax at the junction. Lots of curves, you bet, and even more when you get to the junction. Petticoat Junction. There's a little hotel called the Shady Rest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. It is run by Kate. Come and be her guest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. And that's Uncle Joe. He's a moving kind of slow at the junction. Petticoat Junction. We're sure there are no phones at the Shady Rest Hotel. No, oh, positive, Miss Wayne. Well, we've got a wall phone in the lobby, but it just gives the place a little class. And it's not connected, just like I wrote you in the letter. <laughs> I'm being buried alive. And there are very few other people there. Only time the Shady Rest ever had over three guests at one time was when Miss Pritchett gave birth to triplets in the lobby. <laughs> <laughs> are you happy to have found the grave to put me in truth? Save your throat. Don't worry, you picked the right place for Mr. Haggard to rest in. Shh, please. Not Mr. Haggard, Mr. Jones. I won't let on he's a movie star. Secret's safe with me. I just want to say howdy, Mr. Haggard. Never miss your pictures. Now, this is Floyd Smoot and Charlie Pratt. They operate the Hooterville Cannonball. She's his secretary. Secret's just safe with them as it is with me. I shake hands, but I'm a corpse. <laughs> Just like to say howdy, Mr. Haggard. Have my time. Thank you. Don't you worry about folks finding out who you are. I'd like to get your autograph for my granddaughter. Uh, just sign it, Mr. Jones. She'll know. My dear lady, I save your throat. <laughs> and the secret is safe with all these people. Well, I wouldn't have told them if they couldn't be trusted. Mr. Carson, I hope I didn't make a mistake. It's terribly important for Mr. Haggard to have two weeks of complete rest and privacy. Miss Swain, everything I wrote in that letter was gospel. Are you sure? No attractive females? <laughs> Shucks, no. You think this jacket's all right to be buried in? Mr. Thoreau, what about your niece, Mrs. Bradley, and her three daughters? Who? You mean only Kate and her three ugly ducklings? <laughs> Secretary, Miss Lucy Wayne. How do, Miss Wayne? How do, Mr. Uh, Jones? <laughs> Let me take your suitcase. Oh, no, please. Oh, well, let's come right this way. That's your niece, Mrs. Bradley? Homely Kate? <laughs> I don't understand it. She was homely when I left this morning. <laughs> Let me guess. Those are the ugly ducklings. Snaggletooth, walleye, and prune face left to right. Mr. Carson, you are a fraud. Telling me there were no attractive females here? Well, you see, I keep thinking of them as they were when they first came into the world, toothless and wrinkled, 
I've been too busy to take a good look at him since, I guess. <laughs> All right, Mr. Carson. But let me warn you. Lane Haggard is to the female what the spider is to flies. Oh, there's no danger. Kate's too old to fall for that romance stuff, and the girls are too young. The Haggard charm gets them, from kindergarten to social security. Well, he's met his match. Oh, they'll be polite to him, all right. But Kate and the girls are way too level-headed to be taken in by that Hollywood charm. We see every one of your pictures. Wouldn't miss them. Oh, I'm grateful to you and your sisters. Okay. Sisters? D did you hear that? She's our mother. Your mother? Oh, come on. She's our mother. She is. What do you call this? Pulling a fast one on the uh, city slicker? Oh, no. She really is our mother. Of course she is. Aren't you our mother, mother? <laughs> mother? Did you talk to me, sis? Oh, mother! Yes, I was a child bride. <laughs> Out of kindergarten, into the kitchen. <laughs> Are we going to stand here all day, a spider and then a fly, or is somebody going to show Mr. Jones and his secretary to their rooms? Oh, oh I oh, think that's great! Oh, I thought Kate and her daughters were so level-headed. Oh, I guarantee you the tilt is temporary. And allow me to remind you, ma'am, nobody loves a wise guy. <laughs> Come right in, folks. Supper's about on the table. Mr. Jones, you sit right here. Miss Wayne, you sit right over there. I think you met Floyd and Charlie on the train. This is Sam Drucker, our general storekeeper, notary public, and town wit. Happy to meet you both. How do you do? Hello. Ugh, I'm starved. Uh, Kate don't like first to eat the rolls till the soup is on the table. <laughs> Hurry up. He's sitting down waiting. Now listen. Miss Wayne asked us to treat him just like any other guest, and that's what we're going to do. Oh, but gee whiz, when he looks at you with those deep brown eyes. Billy Joe, you stop mooning around, you hear me? And you girls stop acting like silly, empty-headed little fools. He's just an ordinary man. And they're not brown, they're smoky gray with specks of green. <laughs> Come on, Ma. You've been making over him just as much as we have. You sure have. You've been fussing over him like a mother hen. Well, maybe I have. But from now on, he's to be treated like everybody else, as far as Kate Bradley is concerned. No better, no worse than anybody else. Now, let's get the food on the table. It's the gospel. That's exactly the way it happened. Hey, right? hey here comes the food. Hey, soup time. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> And now our glamorous visitors are going to have to be satisfied with a plain, old, homely country supper. Like us simple folk have to get along on every day. Uh, French onion soup, beef stroganoff, uh, asparagus hollandaise, Waldorf salad, and cherries jubilee. Okay, girl. Now quiet, ladylike. And control your giggling. Now, come on now, see the movie star shave himself. Gee. All right, you've had your 15 cents worth. <laughs> shirt off. <laughs> and I am deeply touched that you named your baby after me. <laughs> Sincerely yours and so forth. Ah, that's enough fan mail. I want to write a letter to Daryl Zanuck about the, uh... Shall I close the curtains? Are you kidding? I'm getting 10 cents a head. <laughs> Some people have to breathe to live. All you need is an audience. Okay, so I'm a ham. Ham? Lane, when your turn comes to die, if there's an audience, I don't think you'll go. When you get through abusing me, we'll get back to work. Come in. 
I came to see if you needed towels. Thank you. And thank you for lighting up my room with those radiant eyes. Uh. <laughs> lighting up the room? Dear Daryl, I'll be in New York on the 23rd. We can talk about that picture in Africa. Come in. I've, uh, I've brought you some towels. Thank you. If this rose could see you, it would die with envy. Stop bothering me. Yeah, and the vicious way that you discourage them. You think they take the hint? I have to be kind to women. It's my duty. Duty? Well, naturally. If heaven gives you a voice, you're, you're obligated to sing. Lane, heaven gave Leonard Bernstein a talent, too, but he doesn't start conducting every time he sees a musician. <laughs> I wish I had the nerve to fire you. if you needed any towels. Thank you. But now I'll have to stop shaving till I get over the effect of those disturbing eyes. Oh. <laughs> Bobby Joe? Bobby? <sighs> what is it, Mom? Well, you were looking at the Chicago catalog glass. What'd you do with it? I gave it to Billy Joe. Mom, do you think a young girl from a small country town could find happiness as the wife of a Hollywood star? Well, our gal Sunday did fine with an English lord. <laughs> so I don't see why you... <laughs> On second thought, a combination like that could only lead to pure misery. Mom, I'm surprised at you. Taking such an old-fashioned attitude. <laughs> Here's a catalog. I figured you'd be looking for it. What's wrong? You, you'll never believe this, but your sister, Bobby Joe, is entertaining romantic ideas about Mr. Haggard. Well, that's the most ridiculous thing I've heard in my whole life. Well, sure glad to see that you think it's foolish. I'm the one he's stuck on. <laughs> oh, my goodness. He's stuck on you? Hmm, is he ever? Well, did he tell you in so many words? No, but a woman knows these things. <laughs> oh, a woman does, does she? Oh, yes. She feels it right here, with her woman's intuition. You wouldn't understand. Well, of course not. What would us fellows know about that? <laughs> no, what I meant was you were too... <clears throat> Skip it. <laughs> oh, I see. I'm too old to know about romance, right? I'm too far over the hill, right? I'm ready for pasture, right? Well, don't just stand there argue with this nonsense. Well, simmer down. Listen, all I care about is keeping you and your sisters from getting your feelings hurt. Now, men like Lane Haggard sometimes say things to women they don't mean flirting like. Do you know what I mean, honey? A am I getting through to you? It sure is, and you're right. Good girl. I'm going to go down tomorrow and tell that naughty Lane to stop flirting with Bobby and Betty. I need help. <laughs> Uncle Joe, he's not here. Well, that's a help. <laughs> What's wrong, Mom? You look worried. What's oh, nothing, honey? I just want to talk to Uncle Joe. He's bedding down the chickens. What's the trouble? It's nothing I'd bother you with, baby. You're too young for such things. Thank goodness for that. Being young can have its problems, like the one I'm having right now. What's that, baby? Something to do with school? Yes. I'm set on graduating, Mom. Well, of course you're going to graduate. What's the problem? 
You think Mr. Haggard will mind waiting three years? <laughs> What a beautiful morning. Now, what did you want to talk to me about, lovely lady? That's it right there. That sweet-talking way of yours. Mr. Haggard, my daughters are very young. I wish you'd call me Lane, lovely lady. No, sir. Not on your life. No nonsense. This is going to be cold and businesslike. I'm going to call you Mr. Haggard, and you're going to call me lovely lady. <laughs> I mean, Mrs. Bradley. This sounds very serious. It is. My daughters never had a chance to be around a sophisticated man like you. So they don't understand that it doesn't mean anything when you pour out those honey words. They've been taking you serious, and they're going to get hurt, and I'm not going to stand for it. Mrs. Bradley, I think your daughters are wonderful girls. I wouldn't hurt them for a million dollars. I know you don't set out to hurt them. You see, Mrs. Bradley, the trouble is making love to good-looking girls has become a reflex action with me. I do it automatically without thinking. You gotta stop it. You're right. That's what I've been telling myself. But as I said, I don't even realize I'm doing it. Do you know what a pleasure it is to be able to talk this way to an intelligent woman who also happens to be one of the loveliest and most devastating creatures I have ever met? No, no, Mr. Haggard. No, no. You're doing it again, huh? You gotta concentrate real hard. Hi there, Lane. Now then, let her have it right between the eyes. Go on. Concentrate. Hello, Butch. <laughs> it's you. I was wondering who that skinny, bow-legged kid was coming up the road. Well, you naughty boy. <laughs> <laughs> The new words were fine, but you're still singing the same old music. <laughs> and the girls think he means it. Mrs. Bradley, Hollywood is full of girls who thought he meant it. Why do you think we're hiding out like this? You don't say. I know of 10 women who expect to marry him, and 18 more who think he's madly in love with them. And all because he simply cannot resist exercising his charm on a pretty face. You know something? What he needs to do is find a nice girl and get married. I know a nice girl who's been trying to sell him that idea for four years. Really? What, do you think she'd be good for him? I think I'd be great for him. <laughs> who do you mean you? Me is exactly whom I mean. Well, what do you know? Has he shown any interest? Yeah, well, Lane is the most wedding-shy man I've ever met. The sad part is, he admits he loves me, and I know I could make him happy. He's afraid of marriage, huh? The sound of wedding bells, he disappears in a puff of smoke. Well, don't you give up. You're a very sweet young lady, and you'll get him yet. But how? I can't force myself on him. Why not? Listen, if they waited for the sheep to walk into the butcher shop, It'll be a long time between lamb chops. You may be right, but I suppose I have too much pride. Good afternoon, Miss Wayne. Kate, can I see you for a minute? I have some work to do in my room. I'll see you later. Anything wrong? Kate, what happened to those three daughters of yours? Well, nothing. I just gave them a good talking to about making fools out of themselves over Mr. Eckert. Well, I don't think it did him too much good. I just seen him down by the well, and they're quarreling like three bobcats over which one he likes the most. I tell you, Uncle Joe, I'm going to have to ask Mr. Haggard to move out. The businessman in me gets sick at the thought. I hate to do it, but he's causing more trouble than he's worth. I've got sightseeing excursions arranged for every day next week at a quarter ahead. 30 cents with his shirt off. I know he can't help it. But he's a real menace to all single women as long as he's not married. Uncle Joe, I just got a lollapalooza of an idea. There's no money in it. You've got no head for business. <laughs> but I'm going to need your help. You get hold of Sam Drucker and maybe Floyd and Charlie. And you're going to need your shotgun. Sounds like a wedding. It's a general idea. Now, here's what we're going to do. Coming. Lane! Mrs. Bradley, stop him! 
Mrs. Bradley. I just can't help myself. I've been thinking about all the things you said. How you feel at home with me because I'm so mature. How pretty you think I am. What are you talking about? Lane, I'm talking about love. I'm talking about us. You and me? Oh, I've been fighting it all right. First, I thought it was silly. You and me getting married. Married? After all, you're younger than I am by weeks. <laughs> and then I realized it was fate that brought you here. Now, wait a minute. Yes. Now I know why I said no to Eldridge Wormser, hardest salesman for Madison Bend. <laughs> and it was for you that I turned down Walter Schwartz, one of the best Mr. Bones that Simpson's traveling minstrels ever had. <laughs> it was fate saving me for you. Kiss me, Lane. Now, look, Mrs. Bradley, uh -huh, this, this is... Oh, you're fighting it. You never felt such an overwhelming emotion, and it scares you. You've got to listen to me. I'm listening to my heart. It's saying, Lane loves me. Lane loves me. He does not. He does not. Go ahead. Fight it, you foolish boy. <laughs> Hollywood will accept me. Uh, I'll fit in. I learn fast. In no time at all, I'll be jumping in the swimming pool with my clothes on, and every now and then we can get a divorce. Oh, we'll be so happy. Stop this. This has gone far enough. Are you kidding me? Kidding you? Well, of course not. You do want to marry me, don't you? Marry you? Of course I don't want to marry you. I can't believe my ears. <laughs> Uncle Joe, Charlie, Floyd. They were right. They said you were a flame, and I was only a foolish moth. <laughs> close and burn my wings. You foolish moth. I don't know what's going on here. Boys, this movie star's been trifling with Kate's affection. I didn't like his last movie, either. I was miscast. My agent talked me into it. What movie was that? He played a minister on this South Sea Island. <laughs> the picture was terrible. Allow me to remind the critic circle that a woman's heart has just been kicked around like a football. Hanging's too good for him. We don't allow our women to be trifled with. He thinks he's back in Hollywood. I say if we don't make an example of him, we're going to be flooded with movie stars trifling with our women. He's right. Now's the time to nip it in the bud. <laughs> Let's leave it up to the little woman who's been trifled with. Kate, do you want to marry this pole calf? Not unless he wants to marry me. I got no pride. Do you want to marry her? Of course not. I'll take him anyway. <laughs> Charlie, Floyd, go get Sam Drucker. Tell him to bring his Justice of the Peace certificate and some cheap rice. <laughs> Come on. Now, you know as well as I do, you can't make me marry anybody. Why not? Because it's against the law, that's why not. Now, Sam Drucker's the marshal. And he never said anything against shotgun weddings being against the law. Suppose I refuse to go through with it. Well, sure, he could do that. There was that underwear drummer from Charlotte who refused to go through one last April. That's right. What was Judge Drucker's verdict on that? Killed while resisting a wedding. <laughs> now, listen, let's talk this over. Uh, let's don't lose our heads. I can't marry Mrs. Bradley. Why not? Well, because I... Because. You married already? No. You fixing to marry somebody? Come in. I just happen to be passing by. <laughs> What's going on? Lucy, save me. I was just saying, the only way he's going to get out of marrying me is to marry somebody else. Well, he's in quite a spot, isn't he? Lucy, will you marry me? <laughs> You know, of course, I plan to have this marriage annulled. Oh, really? Yes. In about 50 years. <laughs> Golly, that was a wonderful wedding. Yeah, I hope I gave them their $20 worth. 
You did just fine, Sam. Well, I'm plum tuckered. Twenty dollars is a lot of wedding. <laughs> I think they're gonna be real happy together. She better treat him right. Because I'll always be ready to take him back. <laughs> so will I. <laughs> Me too. Silly girl. I just hope he'll be able to get his lovely lady out of his system. <laughs> Junction. Junction.